Okay, let's get started with looking at the right-hand side of the panels associated with the library module. I'll move the left-hand panel out of the way by clicking on the small triangle on the left here, and it gives us a bit more room to operate. If we click on an image, you can see the histogram will start to animate, and if we move to a variety of different images, we can see how that histogram, and in this case here, the light one favors the right, and a dark histogram would probably favor more information to the left. We get a bit of XF data associated with our exposures in the histogram, so it gives us the ISO, the millimeter of the lens, the f-stop, and shutter speed. The quick develop mode, which is underneath the histogram, can allow us to do some relative adjustments associated with exposure contrast and these other features, highlight shadows, whites, darks, blacks, and clarity. The unique thing is, is that we can select multiple images, like in the street scene, and auto-sync them by increasing the exposure ever so slightly here, by tapping a few times on the exposure arrow, or we can back it off and bring it down again. But notice all the thumbnails are updating, and we get this little visual clue that says we now have a development on this image with the plus and minus sign. An interesting feature is if I right click on an image and bring up what we call the contextual menu and I create a virtual copy, I get another copy of the preview. So in this case here I've got a development on the original preview so I'll reset that. And this one here is a um, aged photo saved preset from the list up here. So I can have two renderings or as many renderings as I like associated with how these um, previews can be instructed. So if I look over here and I create another virtual copy, we have three images in the stack. One rendering of the original, this one's an antique white, and we can create another adjustment associated with this one, maybe some profile processing for one of the standard ones here. I have an S-curve process, and I might say let's give it a an effects filter. Oh, how about a toned one? Selenium. Cyanotype. Something like that. So if we went to our survey mode from before, we click over here, we can see them in the central viewing area, and we have three rendered photos with different presets associated with them. I'm not a big fan of using the quick develop feature. I'm more inclined to move my images to the develop module and work with the specific slider for the adjustment that I'm trying to achieve. Now we'll roll up the quick develop panel and proceed to the keywording panel. And this is an area where we can apply keywords associated with groups of images or single images. So in this case here this folder is from France as the location so I could select all the images by going to select, select all, or command A or control A on your keyboard depending on your platform. So in this case here, all images are selected, and I'll type in the word France, and then when I hit the return key, you'll see that each of the images now has a small luggage tag associated with it, meaning that it does have a keyword, a searchable keyword associated with it. I'll deselect the images by going to Edit, Select None, or Command D, and I know that these uh, images at the top we're associated with um, a place in France called Arles. Uh, so I could then select those images, put in a comma, and type in Arles. And hit the return key. And so now those images have the keyword associated Arles. The other one is Saint Remy, I think, so we'll go over here and we will select all those images and I'll put in a comma here and type in Saint Remy. Okay, and hit the return key and those are now keyworded properly. We'll do a little bit more extensive video on keywording looking at Peter Fisher's photography who's a stock photographer so he has heaps of keywords associated with his images whereas I might just need a couple of keywords to work within a catalog and use a filter to find the images in the catalog. So in, the in an example here, let's go to the catalog and say all photographs.
And so all the photographs associated with the catalog are in the central viewing area, right? And if I wanted to then use what we call the filter here, library filter text, and it says text in any searchable field, and I type in the word France, hit return, the images associated with France in the catalog come into the central viewing area. If I typed in the word, let's say, New Mexico, hit return, all of these images have the keyword NM associated with them when working with my catalog. So if we look further down the list here, we have keyword tags where we can physically enter keywords. In this case here, it's New Mexico in the very large array keyword associated with these images with the satellite. If we went down here to keyword suggestions, we can click on twirl down the triangle and you can see some keywords that are being suggested for images associated with pics here. So if I click, look at that, Embudo Station, that's the name of the um, location. So we have Classical Gas, Embudo Station, and in this case here I might plug in the, the full name in Budo Station and that works pretty well. So moving away from the suggestions and looking to the keyword set, these are sets that can be created associated with different types of photography. Outdoor photography, portrait photography, wedding photography, or you can create your own set of keywords. So if you wanted to create your own set you could create a series of nine words and then when you came up with those nine words then you can save them as a new preset with a named um, keyword set and you can use those keywords there's nine of them that appear on the screen and all you need to do is highlight the image that you want to use and then you could just tap on that image with the keyword so spring summer fall something like that you could easily do that here so for a landscape we could click here click on the word landscape Notice that it pushes it into the keyword tag. Another landscape. Click here. And this is a summer landscape. So you could click on the word summer as well. So then you could start to filter your images based on keywords associated with the set as well. So what I'd like to do is move to another folder and look at some information associated with metadata. And we'll return to the keyword list here in just a minute. So if we're looking to um, check out the exposure, uh, the copyright information, and so forth, we could go to the Brighton Beach boxes here and turn off my filter here, and then my images will return. And go to metadata here. And metadata allows us to look at information associated with XF data or the IPTC data. Or if we wanted to create a caption for an image, we can put it here. So in this case here, if I look to the XF data, I can find the date and time of the capture of this photo, the millimeter of the lens, and so forth, and which camera was used at the time, and those types of things. Also, we could make a preset for um, my copyright. So in this case here, I would come up here and go to IPTC, which is International Protocol Telecommunications. These are fields, any insertable field here will accept your user input. And I could edit the preset here and we can come up with all the fields associated with IPTC insertion. So in this case here I might put in Jerry Carvassier, copyrighted, the copyright statement, and then may, maybe my um, website. And then save that as a preset that comes up right here and I can apply that to all the images incoming as I um, upload images into Lightroom. Very easily done here. Or select an image to apply a copyright. But when you create a preset, that preset is easily managed anytime you want to use it. It's available.